Well hey folks, welcome back to the Trespasser Let's Play. This time we'll be hitting one of the most visually interesting levels in the game, the town. The town had some serious work put into it, and I'm going to show you as much as possible within the reasonable limits of time. You can see the town has two layers of defense, the wall up ahead and the wall we hopped over in the last level. As I turn, you can see the wall has pretty much disappeared, though the power lines we followed in are still in good shape. That large red building on the right is John Hammond's mansion. We'll be playing a pretty important role later on in this level, but for now we're going to head for the gates, sign, and door over yonder. As we approach the sign, you can see the name of the town is Burroughs, named for Edgar Rice Burroughs, one of Hammond's favorite authors. Now we'll head on in here and find our first puzzle of the level. Security system. Looks like that's still active. Eight shots. Written on the wall is Big Lie. You can see the character is a little bit odd. Now if we mirror the image and flip it upside down, you can see the numbers are 317618. So, let's type it on in. Now you can see it worked, so let's grab the other pistol and get cracking. Eight shots. Now we're about to hear one of the few music tracks in the game, so I'm just going to shut Maybe. up and let you listen to that Maybe for a little bit. Phone line or radio. Now up ahead is a raptor from Tribe A. This place is lousy with raptors, but luckily there's more than Seven. enough ammo scattered around the town to deal with them. Five. Look at this, two minutes into the level and we got two raptors already. Looks like those gates aren't really doing the trick. Four. Three. Two. Now you can see a little physics freak out there with the giant raptor. And you can also see that he gets stuck in the ground here and kind of pivots around. I've seen this happen a couple of times with a couple of different dinosaurs. If you look at the intro video to the Let's Play, you can see the T-Rex is doing it. I'm not really sure what causes that and, well, let's just hope it doesn't happen too much. Already you can see there's more man-made stuff in the last hundred meters than there was in the last three levels. Here in the middle of the courtyard we have a statue of Mr. Edgar Rice Burroughs and those of you who are familiar with the movie will notice that he looks shockingly like Mr. John Hammond. Now our first destination in this level is the church up ahead where we've got to pick up a key item. The plaque lists the manager's office hours and then instructs visitors to please use the back entrance. There's not a whole lot of need for this because the front doors are open. Now let me see if I can take Six. care of Mr. Red Raptor Four. while I'm out here. Two, one, that's it, empty. Ah, fie on him. Let's go inside. Now we're going to head on over here, go into this little office here, and pick up the blue key card. Now this is going to be important in a little bit since this lets us into the security room in the visitor's center. Now before we leave here, we're going to turn around, head up the stairs, and go pick up the easiest to aim weapon in the game. Now here's something I mentioned back during the jungle road. All of the objects in the town that you can interact with float about 10 inches off the ground. I can't really Five figure seconds. out why this is, but it makes puzzles kind of tricky because you've got to jump up on a lot of this stuff. If I touch them, they collapse. Now this weapon Five is a tranquilizer left. rifle, and it's trying to get away, apparently. Alright, tranquilizer seconds. rifle is very nice. Uh, pretty much the same as a tranquilizer pistol, but it has a much longer range. You'll also notice it has a red dot sight, which makes aiming about as easy as it's going to get in this game. Alright, now we can take care of Mr. Red Raptor. Beautiful. Now we're going to continue over this way and make our way towards Main Street up ahead. Let me show you just how effective this weapon is at range. I'm going to get that guy way over there. Huh. Huh. 
Now here we have a saloon or some damn thing. It's in pretty bad shape, so it's hard to tell. Hasn't been used. Eight shots. All right, finally, we're starting to see some of these. What could very well be the finest weapon in the game, the Bell Shotgun. I'll discuss them further later. Now we'll head on down to the ground floor here and you'll see some more examples of the floating objects. In this case, they're tables and a bat back behind the counter. Now as much as I love the bat, we're still not going to be using it since it's basically a death sentence in this game. We're going to continue on now. Eight shots. And we exit out onto Main Street. We're going to avoid this wreckage over here on the right, past the in general store on the left, and head on down to the visitor center that you see down there. And it's time for another musical interlude. Let me tell you, this diner is trouble. I know dinosaurs aren't supposed to be able to get into the buildings, but I swear I've seen them in here before. The acoustics are pretty spooky in here, too. Now I can hear him. I know he's over here somewhere. Good Christ, son of a bitch! I'm sorry about the son of a bitch, guys. I'm sorry. That guy just always gets me. He must be on the roof or something. I can never find him till he's right on top of me. As I write this, tiles are cracking, smeared with windblown dirt and animal tracks. Thick tree roots are pushing up through the asphalt. The island settles itself beginning to erase all trace of us. Something tells me this isn't my ticket out of here. Left to itself, the facility reverts to minimal power, chiefly battery-powered security systems. It can sustain itself almost indefinitely. So here we are, looking for a working radio. Let's hope we find something. Broken. No radio, no phone, no satellite. That's it, I'm dead. Aw, oh, don't be glum, chum. We're only halfway through the game. We're gonna head on over here and use our spiffy new blue keycard that we picked up earlier, and we're gonna continue on. Don't you worry about it, Anne. And here we are in the security room. The legend on the wall tells us what keycards do what. Now this button shows us where the buildings are, this one tells us which ones have power, and here is the data line. We can see there's a huge data pipe connection between the visitor center here and Hammond's mansion that we passed earlier. Now by unlocking gate A, I've just opened up the way to Dr. Henry Wu's place, so that is our next destination. Picking up the clipboard here tells us that Wu has Hammond's keycard, so that's definitely our next destination. We also learn that Hammond's keycard has access to all the gates in the place, which means that he is our ticket out of here. So, without further to do, let's get a move on. We see there's another Tribe B Raptor spooking around out there at the bottom of the steps, so let's try out this Browning 50 Cal, see if we can have any better luck than we had last time. It's half gone. Okay, you know what, forget it. We're just gonna go do this the old-fashioned way. 
Well, I'll be jiggered. Would you look at that? It's another one of these compressed raptors. Poor guy, that must be hard on the back. Let me see if I can get him to unfold here. Huh, doesn't look like it. Alright, looks like he's pretty much stuck that way. Now we're gonna follow Main Street here all the way down to Wu's place, which is right at the gate where we came through at the beginning of the level. As I write this, tiles are cracking, smeared with windblown dirt and animal tracks. Thick tree roots are pushing up through the asphalt. The island settles itself, beginning to erase all trace of us. And here we are at the In General Store. Among other things, they've got a nice Benelli shotgun Your behind the seven. counter here, so we're just gonna borrow that. And now we'll continue our walk down to Wu's place. I can already see there are a couple of raptors up ahead. They shouldn't respawn in this game, but they may have wandered in from other areas of the town. In any case, there's quite a few of them. Now, I don't have the ideal weapons for taking out a bunch of raptors right now, so uh, I'm going to guess that this fight coming up here is going to be kind of bad. I'll do my best, though. Where is the goddamn phone? I want out of here. I want diet soda. I want cotton. Cartoons. Half a clip. It feels about half. Almost gone. Empty. Radio. Phone. Cam with a string. Ooh, doggy, that could have gone better. Luckily, that's Rue's place right up ahead. Now that the gate's unlocked, we can just make a run for it and try to get into the building. You can see it's a pretty nice place. Gets its own wall and everything. Henry Wu was an only child from Ohio, a prodigy. He gained early attention for his undergraduate thesis at MIT. We'll head into the bedroom here and borrow Wu's Red Hawk. Always nice for raptor encounters. got an interesting video collection sitting around here. I can see buried, something I can't read, might say carnivore or something. And if we come over here, we've got zombie love. Boy, that sounds like a winner. And sitting right over there on the kitchen counter is the red key card. The key to Hammond's mansion. Let's snag it, shall we? Six left. Now, unless I miss my guess, Mr. Tri-Bay Raptor's still spooking around out there. Let's see if I can take him out. Alright, there he is over there by the Six basketball rounds. court. I think I've pretty much figured out how to line up the sights on these guns by now, so I'm going to give it my best shot. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Okay, you know what? He ran the gauntlet there, he dodged all six bullets, I figure he deserves to be left alone now. Now dead ahead is Hammond's mansion. Looks like he's doing alright for himself. When I came to London, I had neither fortune, nor education, nor connections. Nothing. These are very unusual statues in that they self-destruct as soon as you touch them. Well, how about that? Alright, front door's locked, so we're gonna have to walk around the back. Please enjoy the music as we walk. Here we 
we are in Hammond's backyard. We're going to pick up the white key card here because it's going to let us into Hammond's private office up on the second floor. Now, let's head on in. Here's Hammond's library, or what's left of it. If we come over to this wall right here, we can find a little secret compartment with a pretty interesting item inside. Secret compartment? Ooh, ah. Uh. Some of my personal papers have been transferred to diskette. This is a three and a half inch floppy diskette with Hammond's personal diary on it. How he managed that in 1.44 megabytes, I'm not exactly sure. But when we go up to Hammond's office, if we have the diskette in our possession, we can hit buttons on the computer and we can listen to the diary entries. It's some nice backstory on Hammond. And here's the office. Let's head on in. Bankruptcy. I leaned against the wall, my whole body shook. Now we're getting somewhere. Now there's a lot of character dialogue in this room, so I'm gonna hush up for a little bit. May 1989. We began laying foundations on the South Beach for a hotel for visiting scientists and businessmen. A year hence, I thought, the island would be quite famous. Building the town was hard. Costa Rican contractors were competent people, but they had to be transported, fed, housed, and afterwards bound to silence. The pylons ran for kilometers, one every hundred meters or so. I built them to last. Running east from the plant, they climbed the valley before descending south into the plains. The main laboratory and administrative buildings, this was where we made our discovery, where the real magic trick happened. When they come to dig up our secrets, they'll come here. A few weeks after we landed, we went to the summit to put up a crude satellite link. The mountaintop station is it then. Last chance. Now, because we have the diskette, we can listen to Hammond's diary entries on the computer. Answer me at first. I asked her again. A diary. This is really old. 1951. Lord Darley's charity luncheon, a society event, 200 pounds a ticket. A bit of a step up for me socially. I was seated with this very pleasant young woman. I, I would gaze at her at dinner parties in moments when she was distracted. The hair on her upper lip, the way she exhaled the smoke from her cigarette. I, uh, I, I stammered it. I was not certain what I should say. She, she laughed though and seemed charmed. Uh, she asked me to call again tomorrow. At 2 a.m. I called once again. She had still not come home, nor did they know where she was. I, I didn't leave my name. She would not answer me at first. I asked her again. Party goers glanced curiously in my direction. Candlelight blurred my vision. I'll never forget this, and I will never forgive. I swear it. This. Well, that's depressing as all hell. Now, if we head to the end of this hallway here, on the left, we'll find Hammond's bedroom and his personal sidearm. Very useful little weapon. Six left. Ladies model. Fantastic little gun, but I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Here's a cattle prod like the one used by Dieter in The Lost World. It's fun, but it's a real pain to use, and I'll show you why. Sagnathus and Triascus, found by Frost in Bavaria in 1913. Is it dangerous? Uh, no, I, I wouldn't think so. Six uh, rounds. presumed to be scavengers, like jackals. Gives me the creep. It's like it's not scared. There haven't been any visitors to this island. There's no reason for it to fear, man. <laughs> you 
Now it does. So there's the history on the shock prod. Now, I'm sure you heard the thing pulsing on the ground after I threw it away, and that's the problem. As long as you have it stowed on your body, it'll sit there and continue to shock you until you die. So, it's not a real good weapon to carry around with you. Now we're gonna pass through the gate here, back onto the road, and then out towards Six the round. far town gate. Now that we've got Hammond's pass card, we can get through anything. So, we're gonna open up the far gate, and that's gonna let us out of the town and into the rest of the level. Now there's the Velociraptor still hanging out in the basketball court. Let's try out this new pistol on him, how about? Four. One shot, not bad. We're gonna pass under the basketball hoop here and keep heading in this direction. If you look around, you can see a lot of half-built houses. They really hammer home the fact that InGen was really in the middle of a big operation here when they all just picked up and left. Both the monorail and the town here, you can really tell, are in various states of construction, and now they're never going to be finished. The funny thing was how easy it was. Nobody stops you. Just get on the bus and watch the highway start moving. The whole world before you. I guess it's not a vacation if you don't know when you're coming back. The lady has a point, but give her a hand for the stiff upper lip. Here she is in a very dangerous survival situation. She's already gunned down scores of dinosaurs and had a run in with, uh, what, one T-Rex so far. And here she is trying to look at the whole thing as a vacation. That is a good mental attitude. Now there's the gate out of here over there in the far wall and one more tri -B raptor between here and there. Let's go take care of him. We sealed off the town, save for a few crucial gates. South to the lunar, eastward to the power plant and laboratory. Two. Two shots for a tri -B raptor. You know, that's not too bad at all. Well, that's it for the town, folks, but we've got a ways to go in this level yet. Here we go. So our weapon here is Hammond's personal sidearm, the ladies' model. It's got six shots, and we found it there in the bedroom. Believe it or not, this little pea shooter is actually one of the best weapons in the game. Does a heck of a lot of damage. No pistol or even rifle does more damage, though the short barrel makes it pretty inaccurate. So we're going to have to be real careful with it. This is the only one in the entire game. Now the road we're on right now goes all the way to the end of the level, but the game is going to force us into a couple of detours along the way. Now just up ahead is a pretty impressive battle between two T-Rexes and a Parasaur. I'm going to do my best not to get involved, but I'm going to show you guys how it all goes down. Now I'm not going to go and do a call out on the T-Rex, because this level's gone on long enough already, but I'm going to go ahead and give you the info right here instead. On the plane the heat was extraordinary. Like a solid wall. What can you say? Run. And then run some more. You don't stand much of a chance in a one-on-one -on -one fight with a Tyrannosaurus Rex. As the old sports caster cliche goes, you can't stop it. You can only hope to contain it. The T-Rex is fast, but only a small burst. If you can get a head start on it, you can outrun it. Slow down, however, and it'll be right on top of you. When you hear that telltale roar, find cover. If it can't see you, it won't come after you. The good news is that the Tyrannosaurus Rex is easily distracted by larger prey and gives up quickly, but when it catches up to you, that's pretty much it. The T-Rex is basically indestructible, so don't even bother. Well hey, they didn't notice us, we lucked out, but we're gonna go ahead and keep going here. This thing's already starting to look like it's gonna go over time. There's a big old rock up ahead with a hunting rifle that we can pick up, and if you look off in the distance you can see old Mount Hamilton, I think they called it. The end of the game. We're getting closer. Three shots. One. That's it. Well, that was an excellent damn use of the only one of these guns in Ten the whole shots. freaking game. Time to switch over to old trusty here with the pile of bones. Now that's more like it. Dropped him at a thousand paces. 
And it looks like the red T-Rex won that little fight over there. I don't see anybody else stomping around, so I imagine he killed the other T-Rex and the Parasaur. This road is really killer. It is seriously long and it throws raptors at you at almost every turn. I'm going to see if I can get through this without wrecking myself here. Man, these Tribe B Raptors are tough. Look at that. That guy soaked up a lot of hunting rifle bullets. And that's pretty much all you run into in the game from here on out. These guys are really going to be a problem down the line. Hunting dinosaurs is quite a tricky business. I recommend helicopters. If you've got them. He recommends helicopters. Har, har, har. Didn't work out so hot for Biosyn back there, did it? And here's another one. Here we go. <laughs> Problem solved. Jesus Christ, another one. Now that's what I like to see, another Bell Eight shotgun. Shot. This thing is an absolutely brutal piece of mid-range hardware. The Bell can be fired effectively from the hip or aimed more precisely from the shoulder. This thing sprays death with more shells than the Benelli, does slightly more damage, and is even more accurate. The sound alone is a weapon from this damn thing. You'll remember it as Muldoon's rifle from the first Jurassic Park film. And since I'm really running out of stuff to say here, let's just watch that clip. Now here's a wrecked jeep up ahead. It's got another bell shotgun and another hunting rifle, and we're going to need it because there's a little raptor fight just up ahead here. Eight left. Now up ahead in that patch of trees are three Tribe B Raptors. They're standing between us and the flood control building at the base of the dam up ahead. If I run out of ammo, I'm gonna have to make a break for that building, so let's go see how this works out. Okay, number three is hanging out way over there. Looks like this is going to work out just fine. You can see the big ruined bulk of the dam off in the distance over there. I 
Alright, damn. There's another couple of raptors between here and the building. Let's see if I can work this out. Alright, on to number two. Empty. Hell with that. Feels full. And there's another one skulking around down there. Let's just hit this button and get the hell out. Six left. Now this switch opened up a secret area in the dam that we're going to check out in just a minute. But first, we're going to make a break for the stairs over there. Ah, he's on to me. Okay, there's a Lindstrat rifle on the ground. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. That is what you get, you goddamn raptor. Sorry about all the bunny hopping here, guys. Anne doesn't seem to be able to get upstairs normally. I have to jump the whole way up. Now we're walking along the top of the dam here, and up ahead there are two small walkways. We can drop down between them to a little spillway. If we follow that down, we'll get to the door that we opened up from the flood control building earlier. Carefully, we carefully drop down and walk up the corridor. I first met Harold Greenwood in 1992. He was uh, an American, introduced to me as a former Green Beret. He asked a number of questions about the disposition of the InGen technology. Harry claimed to be a friend of my former son-in-law. I liked him. He was confident and dashing. He must have been scared. He was wounded. He crawled in here, maybe losing blood. I guess he thought it was safe. Well, safe or not, it just got me two MAC-10s. So, we're gonna have to walk all the way up those stairs again. So, for the benefit of time and all of you, I'm gonna cut that out right now. So we'll continue walking along here, get to the edge of the dam, and we'll be back on solid ground. Once there, we'll be back on the road we were on earlier. We'll be able to follow it up the hill and then to the very end of the level. Now here we've got another set of dual desert eagles. They decided to start and end this level with two of those. I'm not sure what that's all about, but generally when you find weapons at the very, very end of a level, it's not a good sign. Especially in a game that doesn't let you carry your weapons over from level to level. And here we are on the road again. Nearly there, folks. Just bear with me. This doesn't appear to be a very effective long-range weapon. Looks like he's working his way over here. Well, I guess not. Looks like we won't have to deal with this guy after all. A 
Whoops, but we will have to deal with this guy. Feels about half. Nearly empty. Feels full. Ooh, that could have been bad. Well, there we are, out of dinosaurs and out of bullet. And up ahead is the end of the level. And there it is, the gate to the next level, level 5, the lab. Well, thanks for coming out, everybody. This is Research Indicates for the Something Awful Forums. I'll catch you next time.